I'm Dr. Chandra Niranjan, and I'll be taking you today to the second lesson, The Power of Positive Thinking. It is often said that we become what we think. What does this mean, actually? If we start with a small saying, positive thinking is not only about expecting the best to happen, but it also is about accepting whatever happens is for the best. We have heard this many times. So does this work? Can it turn your life around? Can you actually say whatever happens, happens for the best? Just imagine a scenario. A student who is extremely good at class, very hard working, talks the class all the time, has no problem with comprehending, understanding, or with getting around with people. Absolutely. He's one of the really good students of the class. He's called to go, go and give his presentation. And what happens over there? He falters. He stammers. He doesn't know what the next sentence is going to be. He gives up. This happens again and again. He's trying his best, but he's not able to overcome this. So one day, what happens? When he gives up his presentation, the professor very calmly says, please be here. Sorry. So one day, when the professor sees that he is trying his best but not able to do it, he asks him to stay back after the class. The student stays back after the class and the professor says, you are trying your best. But what is happening? Is there anything I can help you with? The boy has no answer. He again stammers and he says, I just can't do it. So the professor walks up to the board, writes the word can't, and says, My dear boy, just knock out the T from can't and you will see the difference. Now how does this work? See, the vital principle or the main thing of us being able to do a certain action or perform a certain act is a principle that you believe that whatever you're doing will happen. Now, there are many things, many times, that you want to do something but are not able to do it. That's because you do not believe that you can do it. For example, if the thinking is the body of the rocket, believing is the propellant that carries it to the stars. When you think of doing something, the outcome, that is the success or the failure, depends on whether the thought is positive or negative and how we directly handle that situation. Let me give you, let's think of a few common examples. You stand on the diving board, you look down, you look down at the water, your heart is beating, and you say, oh my God, I cannot do this. Or, a first-time driver sits in the car, wants to go ahead, but then, Again, his nervousness, his belief, his thought says, oh no, I really cannot do this. How many times have we not faced this situation? The main thing is you need to become a believer in yourself. I think that is the beginning. Example, when you get into a dark room and put on the switch, what happens? You go in with confidence, believing that the light will come on. When you board a bus or an airplane, what are you believing in? You believe that the pilot or the driver is going to carry you to your destination. So you board the bus. So now this is what we say, believe in yourself. 
Look what happens when companies introduce their product with unusual names. What does Amazon have to do with books? Or what does the word Apple have to do with a computer? Why have they become so successful? Because the promoters believe that these names would click in the market. It is the confidence they had that they had a superior product. And this is what carried them through. So that is believing in yourself. What happens when you don't believe in yourself? Many times an overweight person decides to lose weight, starts on a diet with the belief, with a picture of himself looking slim and fit. After a few weeks, when he sees no change on the scale, his immediate thought is, I don't think I'll ever lose weight. I can't be the slim person. So what is his problem? You now you see, you recognize that it is a lack of self-confidence. It is a low self-esteem. It's just that he does not believe in himself. So what do you do? The best thing is train yourself to react differently. Say to yourself, I am going to be successful. Constant repetition, a constant assertion will eliminate the negative effect. It is like trying to rub off something and writing something new. Because when a long-time thinker decides that he has to become a positive thinker, it is like he has to unlearn the old negative habits and relearn the new positive habits. So it is like replacing the old with the new, replacing the negative with the positive. And this is what has to happen because this long time negative or long time habits change to attitudes. And attitudes are formed over a long time. So what you have to do is such a person needs to commit himself to developing a totally different mindset. Because I said in the beginning, we become what we think. If you think you can do it, you will do it. If you think you can't do it, you will not do it. Now, let's look at things what happens when there is a group of people who are discussing? Let's take an incident of a group discussing a project. Now they were talking about a project that is setting up a free dialysis center. When they researched about it, they knew that it is going to cost them about 65 lakhs. Now that was a huge amount. So, as usual in any project, they sat together for a discussion. And you know that in a, any group, you have all kinds of people. Some talk, some do not talk, some argue, some look at it positively, some look at it negatively. However, in this group, for almost an hour of, after almost an hour of discussion, it's kind of looked that the project was turning bad. There was more negative than positive. Most of them felt that they must give up this project and take a new project. So it was about to be closed when one of them in the group who was usually a silent person, you know, a thinker, said, things may look bad, but but so on. He never said anything beyond that. But that had a very powerful impact. Suddenly, the group set thinking about what after the bite. There were more discussions. And very slowly, what was negative started to turn positive. They started thinking of new avenues, new networks, new ways of doing things. 
So finally, at the end of the second hour, the project looked positive and they decided that they would go ahead with the project. You see what an enormous impact some of them will have, which actually goes to say that when you inject a powerful alternative to a negative conversation, you will see what an impact that alternative would have. Let me take another situation. All of us have gone through this. There are people whom we get along with. There are people whom we don't get along with. There are people whom we think are always doing good. There are people whom we think are always not doing good. You see, what happens is, sometimes, when you start seeing a single person or maybe one or two more people as negative, you always feel that they're not going to be good for you. So what happens in the end is, that kind of negative power overtakes your thoughts. And you start forming a very negative opinion. And this could happen not with one person or one situation. The moment these kind of negative thoughts start creeping into you, it could sort of become a huge block. You could become a negative person. Like we thought earlier, it could form a negative attitude. Now, how do you get over that? Let's not panic. This is a difficult situation. So what you actually have to do is you have to calm down. Learn to build a positive image of that person or the situation. Imagine, visualize what can happen if that negative thought turns into a positive thought. Because when you have your emotions under control, you can turn things around. Visualize that you have already jumped from the diving board and are swimming. Visualize that you have become slimmer and fit. Visualize that the dialysis center has already been set up and is running. See the dramatic change. It is like dreaming with your eyes open. That's the reason we always say, look at the, always or always see the glass as half full. What happens when you are infused with positive thinking? When that happens, you have a happier well-being. And when you are happy, you see things around you as being happy. So your health is better. Your attitude is better, your thinking is better, and when your thinking is better, the mental enemies that you have, such as hate, fear, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and other negatives are wiped out. Let's take the many examples that history has witnessed because the most outstanding achievements by men and women who are differently able are something that is uh, that is something that we have to learn from. You see, they did not weep, they did not complain. They challenged those challenges with courage, confidence, and a positive thinking. They did not let their disability hold them back to do anything. Giving you a few examples, we know Stephen Hawking, a physicist who was called quadriplegic. We have Helen Keller, who was blind and deaf at a young age, but who became a famous author. We have Stevie Wonder, who was uh, uh, again a blind or visually challenged. Um, sorry. We have Stevie Wonder, who was. We have retake again. We have Stephen Hawking, a physicist, as you know, he was a quadriplegic. 
we have Helen Keller who became blind and deaf at a very young age but who became a really famous author. We have Stevie Wonder who was challenged again but became a musician. Sudha Chandran who lost a leg but is a dancer. Ravindra Jain again physically challenged but is a musician. Preeti Srivastava, captain of the women's cricket team and Arunima Sinha who lost her leg in an accident but who big, went on to climb the Mount Everest. Now these are the achievers and we still have many more even today who have not let those challenges hold them back. So what does this entire positive thinking means. It is just that you'll have to train your mind to see the good in every situation. Thank you.